Welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we create a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. And so I said we would come back to this button. And so we are going to use that bindable button we created. And we can do that by declaring the namespace up here. So XML and S. And we'll just say buttons is fine. And then we wanted to say buttons. And we don't want the view models version. We want the views version. So that'll bring in the views.buttons. And then we'll change button from regular button to our binded, bindable button. And then all we need to do is set its binding context to our button model, which we don't have in the page model yet, but we'll add right after this. So let's say binding, and this will be clock in out button model. And I'm saying in out because it, it will do, it'll handle both. And so that'll take care of that. We can go ahead and save. And now we'll head back into the page model. And now we want to add that, that button model. So we have a button model. And this will be clock in out button model. And then we'll do the same thing with the public variant that we did on the other ones. So public button model, clock in out button model. And make sure get and set match the pattern that we've been using. And when you're done, it should look something like this. If you have this, we can save. And then we want to make our constructor. So our constructor will be public time clock page model. And we at least want to initialize our button model. So clock in out button model equals new button model. And the title will be clock in because when this is first created, they're not clocked in. So clock in. Um, we can either pass in a command or an action. So let's go ahead and pass in an action. So this will be on clock in out action. And then when we use our quick fix, it will create the method for us. And so now we have this method on clock in out action, and that's where we can handle the button model click. And we can leave the other variables because is enabled and is visible are both true. So we can just close it there. We'll also want to initialize our work items. So we can say work items equals new, and it will kind of recommend the type. And so we can just initialize it there. And then we'll want to override the initialize async method. So we can go below our constructor and say override initialize async, and that'll give us the method to override. We want to make running total, uh, just re just initialize it with zero. Uh, so by its blank, we'll make it um, zero days, zero minutes, all of that. And then we'll need to provide the format string for the running total. So we can do that by saying string format and this will be just zero. So I added an empty opening and closing bracket. And so in here we can use a colon and we can provide some kind of a format string. And so we'll say it's H for hours and we don't always want it to be two digits. If it's one hour, it'll just be one digit. Um, and then we need the two backslashes and a colon. And then we'll use two digit minutes. So MM and then the same thing backslash colon and then SS. And what this will do is give us a one digit hour, two digit minute and two digit second. And this will track the clock in duration. So that's perfect. We also want to provide a string format for the current start time as that is a date time and we don't want it to do the system to string. We want to provide our own string. Start time is not going to necessarily be um, month, day, year, but definitely the hours, minutes, and then like AM, PM. So we can do that by using a colon and we can just say H colon MM, which is one digit hour and two digit minute. And then we can just use a space and say TT, which will be AM or PM. So this will say you clocked in at, you know, 427 PM if you clock in right now. So now that we have that set and we are relying on the page model as the binding context, we need to make those binding contexts set in the dashboard page. So the dashboard page model already has these uh, page page models for us and we just need to bind to them in the dashboard page model. So on each of these pages, we could set each of their binding context to their respective binding context. So in dashboard page model, the time clock page model is called time clock page model. And in fact, all of them are called th their variable name or their property name is the same as their type. We can just use their type name to bind to. 
So I'm just going to copy this line that adds the binding context to the page. And I'm just going to paste it so each of these pages have its binding context set. And then I'm going to change each of the parameters from the time clock page to their respective page models. So summary page will have summary page model. Profile page will have profile page model. And settings page will have settings page model. And now we can test this to see if our bindings are going to work. So we can press run. And then our login page is going to require something entered for username and password because that's a restriction we put through the account service. So let's just add anything in there and press login. And now we'll see that we have the time, we have the you clocked in at, and it's a default time. And then we have the earnings today is zero. Uh, one thing we'll notice is this tab bar is at the top, so we'll fix that. And we want our page to be styled a little better than just these default controls, so we'll fix that. And we'll notice that we have our tabbed page wrapped in a navigation page, and we don't want that, so we're gonna fix that as well. So let's go ahead and move the tab bar down to the bottom on Android. And so we can do that using an Android specific, uh, which is in XML NS, and we'll just call it Android equals Android specific, which is in a Xamarin Forms core namespace. And when we press enter, we can bring that in. And now we can use um, an Android tabbed page dot toolbar placement and that's an enum, which we're not seeing because IntelliSense isn't picking it up, but we can just say bottom and that'll put it on the bottom. So now when we press run, we'll see that the tab bar moves to the bottom. So we'll log in and that's just with anything in username, anything in password and press login. And now we'll see that our tab bar moved to the bottom. And so we have time summary profile and settings on the bottom. And the next thing we need to do is unwrap this tab bar, this tab page from a navigation page. So we can stop our current run. So now if we head over to our navigation service, we can stop the tab page from being wrapped by first checking it. So if set root, so if page is tabbed page, we can just call it tabbed page is fine. So if, if this page is a tabbed page, then we don't want to actually wrap it in a navigation page. We just want to set it as the app.current.main page. So app.current.main page equals tabbed page. Otherwise, so we'll use an else and then we'll just move this up. Okay, and then if set root is false, we still wanna make sure that we're not wrapping a tabbed page, which we should never be coming into this method with a tab page and set root is false, but just in case we do, let's check it first. So the first thing we'll do is say, if page is tabbed page, same as above, and we, we have to call it something different, so tab page. So if this is true, then same thing, we'll just say app.current.main page equals tab page. And then we want to just change this one to an else if. So else if main page is a navigation page, then push, otherwise wrap it. And so now we're not wrapping this tabbed page. So that's perfect. The one thing we want to do is since we are, we are pretty much relying on this being a page model base, let's go ahead and enforce this policy. And so we can enforce this by going back to this interface. And instead of just ending it here, we can just say where T page model extends page model base. And this will let us enforce that you can only navigate forward to a page model base, which is, which is what we want. And now when we go to navigation service, we'll have an error up top and it's because navigation navigate to async does, does not have the same restriction. So let's go ahead and add the restrictions. So where T page model extends page model base, and that should re remove the error and that should make it good. And now we can test and both of those issues should be resolved. Our tab bar should be at the bottom and we shouldn't have that back arrow at the top left when we're on the dashboard page. So let's go ahead and run. And when we get to the login page, we can go ahead and just log in with some random credentials and we should get here. And now we notice that our back arrow is no longer there and our tab bar is at the bottom. So that's perfect. And so the next thing we want to do is style this page up a little bit. So we want this actual title bar to no longer be here. So we're going to make that go away. And while this is running, we can use hot reload to go ahead and just make that disappear. So if we go into the time clock page right in here, uh, we could say navigation page dot has navigation bar equals false. And when we press save, 
hot reload should reload this page and get rid of that top bar. So that does that for us, so no problem there. And the next thing we wanna do is make this upper view bigger. And so we wanna provide some kind of uh, margin on all sides and, a, and a, especially a bigger one at the top. So that is this stacked layout. And so we can go ahead and add some padding here. So we can add a padding of um, 20 on the left and right, or just 20 left. And we'll do something larger like 50 on the top. And then we'll do 20 on the right. And um, the bottom can just be something small like five or 10. And when we press save, we should see that that makes some kind of a, a significant difference. And so now our box is getting bigger. Uh, this label that has our running time needs to be much, much larger and center. So let's go ahead and change that. So this label is the running total and that's its text. So we can change the font size to something very large like 25 or 30. We'll just do 30 and we'll, we'll just save it and check to make sure that's big enough and it's not. So let's make it up to 40. We'll save and we will come back and check. And even 40 is probably not big enough. So let's go all the way up to 50 and just see what that looks like. And 50 looks better. So now let's make it center. So we want its horizontal text alignment to be center. And we'll press save and we'll check it. And there we go. And so that's center. We also want you clocked in at that label to also have its horizontal text alignment to be center. And we'll save it and check again. And so now that's center. And our clock in button, we don't really want it to be um, full screen. We just want to set its, its uh, width. So this bindable button, let's set its horizontal options to center and its width request to something like 200. And now when we check, we can see that its button got, this button got smaller. And now instead of these just fill and expand on start and in total, let's make them center and expand so that they center inside of their view. So let's change each of these to center and expand. Save it and just see what it looks like. Okay, so those cent centered inside of their uh, respective areas. Um, earnings today should be, um, you know, at least some padding on the, that actual stack layout. So let's go down to the stack layout. Let's provide some padding of just a default of 10 around, all the way around. And when we look, we should see that that got some padding. Perfect. And that looks pretty good. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.